Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launched in April 25. This was actually an insanely difficult month, possibly the hardest one ever. There were at least 40 Unity games that look really interesting, and maybe 20 more that also look really awesome but were not made with Unity. So yep, getting this list down to just 10 was definitely a tough choice. As always, that's awesome news for players, lots of really cool games to play, but of course it's tough news for developers since the competition is all so incredibly excellent. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are nickel impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Did you hear the story on how the game about digging a hole actually made millions of dollars? Or do you know how much is a Steam Daily Deal worth and how you might get one? Did you hear about the problem of making more money with assets than games? Or have you done this extremely important exercise? Those are all things that I covered in my Game Dev Report newsletter. It's what I write every single Sunday with any weekly game dev news and some interesting articles that I come across every week. Sign up for free with the link in the description. And just before we get to the actual top 10 April lists, let me actually just do one honorable mention of Schedule 1. So last month I wasn't able to do one of these videos, but I still want to highlight this massive mega hit. It is another solo developed game that made over 50 million dollars, that's an insane mega hit. And also it's yet another one of those interaction games. So you walk around and interact with objects and people to do all kinds of things. You start from nothing and grow your way into a really massive empire. I wrote about this game in my Game Dev Report newsletter and how it's so interesting that for indie games the ceiling is pretty much infinite, meaning how it's actually pretty hard nowadays to make a game that makes some like 10k, but you can technically make a massive mega hit kind of like this one just by yourself and make tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. So yep, this industry definitely is very very interesting. Alright, so now starting off at number 10 with a great looking puzzle adventure game titled Blueprints. This one got quite a big trailer in the recent AAA initiative event and then blew up like crazy. The game itself is very mysterious, you navigate through shifting corridors and ever-changing puzzle chambers. Every time you encounter a door, you can choose what exactly is behind that door. The goal is to eventually reach the rumored room 46. The floor plan resets every single day, so it also has some roguelike elements. Items can also be used in various ways, so it's up to you to use your brain to use them in different ways to get you deeper inside the house. There are so many unique rooms, they're really not just a slight variation, they're actually all completely different. It's honestly a bit surprising to see this game in a, let's say, supposedly niche genre become such a massive mega hit. This one looks like it has already made over five million dollars in just one month that means the game must do something really different people are absolutely loving this one it has got five thousand very positive reviews so if you're a fan of games kind of like mist or those kinds of adventure puzzle games if you like those and you want a modern twist on that then definitely check out this one up next we have into the dead our darkest days this is a nice 3d side scrolling zombie game this perspective is always quite interesting it limits things quite a bit in terms of gameplay which means you need to be clever in different ways here your goal is to lead a band of desperate survivors from refuge to refuge by scavenging, crafting and fighting your way on your journey. Visually the game looks really gorgeous, it's got some excellent lighting, excellent assets coupled with some very varied environments. I really think this is one of the best looking Unity games I've seen in a long time. The shooting also looks slow and extremely impactful, that's awesome. It looks like the perfect kind of shooting for a zombie game. Here you can recruit survivors to join you on your quest, you can upgrade your shelter with defenses, but also keep in mind that no barrier can last forever, so at some point you have to go outside to find new shelter, your survivors have needs, they've got hunger, thirst and so on, so they've got physical needs, but also some mental needs. You can, for example, heal the survivors with benches, and maybe try to manage some traumas like nightmares. And of course, as the leader you will have to make some very difficult decisions that define whether someone lives or dies. This one is out now in early access, the game seems to have some randomness, so it is not just a story focused experience, and people are really loving this one. It has already got over 3000 very positive reviews. This seems like an excellent new entry in this relatively niche genre of 3 3D side scrollers. Next, for something a bit more cute and cozy, here we have Monster Care Simulator. You are the manager of this Monster Care Center. Clients come in and drop off their creatures, then your job is to take care of them. So give them a shower, heal their burns and make them smell good, then go ahead and play with them, use the flute to get them all excited and running around, start off with a simple small facility and then build it up into something really awesome. Take good care of a handful of monsters to get some money and then use that money to upgrade and help more creatures. Each creature is very unique and also requires you to care for it in many different 
different ways. And then some monsters can also drop some eggs. You can hatch them and basically raise your own companions. Then you can help them grow from a tiny creature into a full-fledged monster. And all of this, you're not alone. You can hire some help to aid you in running this Kersen. This is definitely one of the more unique simulated games to come out recently. It's a very interesting take and the response from players has been pretty positive. It is out now in early access and currently has 150 very positive views. Next, we have some gorgeous pixel art action called Castle of Alchemists. This one is a fast-paced tower defense action hybrid game. You play as an alchemically enhanced warrior and your goal is to set up traps to defeat the various waves of enemies. The castle is really just up to you to defend, use the various traps at your disposal to protect it, and you can also wield some weapons yourself so you can craft weapons that have unique randomized abilities that only you can use. And naturally, like any tower defense game, you have synergies with various effects. So for example, you can put up some metal traps and hit them with some electricity, or you can shower your enemies with oil and then burn it. The combinations are really endless. You can advance through various levels in this gorgeous pixel art game. Personally, I love how it looks. Then you can face some massive bosses, defeat some never-ending hordes, or beat some challenges. It has just fully released after spending almost two years in early access, and right now it's got 500 very positive views. Then here we have one that has been in development for five years. It's Slime Keep. If you follow YouTube game dev, then you probably recognize this one. Personally, I've seen lots of devlogs over the years. It's great to see it finally out. This one is an action roguelike in a procedurally generated large world. You can kill various slimes using a multitude of weapons. There's a total of 80 of them with various upgrades, or you can also capture them. Captured slimes can become your pets, and there are dozens of slime types, so you can play around with different companions on your journey. For example, you can get one that is a massive brute just destroying everything, or get one that is more of an assassin picking targets one by one. There's many to choose from. One really interesting mechanic about the game is how every slime will grow over time, so you have to decide if you want to let them grow in order to gain more resources, but naturally doing so at the cost of them becoming more powerful and hard to kill, or do you take the easier route of taking them out while they are still smaller? You've got less loot, but also less risk. Whatever path you choose, you then get to engage in some massive boss fights. All the bosses are very unique, with different phases and different ways to defeat them. Naturally, the art style is the thing that makes it stand out right away. Everything is a shade of green. Personally, I quite like it. I think it makes it look quite unique, and apparently it's also customizable. So I wonder if you can make the entire game red or yellow or something. This one is out now after five years of solo game development, and right now it's got 80 very positive views. So if you've been watching the devlogs over the past few years like me, then maybe give this a try to see the final result. Up next, we have a spin-off of a very successful indie game series. It's Beholder Conductor. I remember the first Beholder game. That was one of the biggest indie hits back in the day. It came out in 2016. Then they made a few more, and now this one, this is more of a spin-off. So instead of being side-scrolling, this one is more of a management game. You manage this train, you are the conductor. Your goal is to monitor passengers, so report some incidents and carry out the ministry assignments. You can look through locks to see what your passengers are doing, check under their seats to see if anyone is carrying anything suspicious. Secrecy is needed. You need to look to make sure there's nothing banned on board. If there is, you can call the police and the ministry will reward your actions. Then the train is also huge with different sections. You can move up in the train towards the VIP compartments and where all the high-ranking officials and big industrialists are. Keep an eye on them to see if anyone is accepting any bribes or transporting some banned goods. As you move up in the train, you gain the trust of higher-ups and do more and more secret special missions. So will you work for the ministry completely or will you perhaps try to smuggle some packages which will be risky and very profitable. The choice is yours. The game is out now and already has almost 800 reviews at very positive. Then here we have a fun sci-fi card game called Lone Star. This is a roguelike spaceship deck builder. You choose from various ships piloted by over 50 unique pilots, each with their own different random talents. Then you build out your ship with various modules. There are over 250 unique parts. There are 230 items and 100 random events. Choose the right combination between attack modules and support modules. And then the game features a very unique combat system. You use cards to enhance various models to go into a beam struggle. If you deal more damage, you hit the enemy spaceship, then you break their shields and perhaps even blow them into pieces. Once you win, you continue on your journey from event to event and battling difficult special bosses. The combat system does sound very unique, kind of like a mix of FTL but with cards. Personally, I quite like the numbers and the beam struggles. They look really awesome. The game is fully released after spending one year in early access and right now it has 1600 very positive views. Up next, we have another interesting one called Kingdom Zek. This one one is a card-based city builder where you build and protect your kingdom from the enemy siege. You build your deck out of various cards, then use them in action, but make sure you use them wisely. Some cards give you extra gold, others let you build items, and other cards give you some special abilities you can use to destroy enemies. You have to survive across various camps with increasing difficulty. There are some relentless attacks on your castle. You have to defend everything, manage your resources, manage your units, and use your spell cards. I also love the visual style on this one. It's cartoony, slightly silly, but still the combat looks it's interesting to see card mechanics added to all 
kinds of different genres, so it's fun to see them added to a city builder game. This one is out now and has 100 very positive views. Then if you want some first person magic, look at Wizardom. You play as a mage and your goal is to track down the source of chaos. You can wield a wide arsenal of weapons and spells, battle your way throughout this giant very varied world, all in a nice first person 2D old school perspective, so it does look like a game straight from the 90s, but made super polished with today's tech. I think it looks great. Choose your spells and upgrade them to make them super powerful. Take down hordes of enemies and super powerful bosses. Find some hidden secrets in all the dungeons, solve some puzzles and avoid some deadly traps. You can even create and share your own custom levels, all from inside the game with a fully fledged level editor. This one was in early access for over a year and just hit 1.0. It is out now with 350 very positive views. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here we have a very interesting game called White Knuckle. It's a first person roguelite speed climbing game. Definitely a weird one. You control your hands to grab onto ledges, then move yourself up, forward, or swing around. First I thought this was a VR game, but nope, you control the hands with your mouse and move around. Then to enhance your movement, you also have a ton of interesting tools. You can throw a spear to a random place, then the spear has a rope, then you can grab that rope and swing around to jump some gaps. There are also some creepy enemies that you must either avoid or kill. And of course, the whole thing is a roguelite. So you have progression and perks. Basically, every run is going to make you stronger. And visually, the whole thing looks quite trippy. You've got some very low-res textures, some very weird creatures, very weird environments. Back in my day, I loved playing the Counter-Strike Creed's climbing maps. Those were a lot of fun. And this seems like a nice new iteration on that genre. So I definitely need to give this one a try. This one is out now in early access with 1,500 overwhelmingly positive views. They are at 98% positive, that's a near perfect score. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in April 25. I hope this list helps you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Thinking Guardians, and I hope you enjoy playing it. If you need some gorgeous effects and environments, check out this bundle 99% off. It features a ton of stuff that has never been bundled before. It includes a bunch of effects packs, as well as a bunch of awesome looking environments. Some of these are in real packs, and some of them are Unity packs. Although technically even the unreal ones, since these are just meshes, you can still use them in Unity. Check it out in the link in the description.